idea behind the book is that we would tell the stories behind famous landmark health law cases, um, but the story that doesn't get told and that can't be captured adequately by the court record. You know, court records are sort of just sterile recitations of crucial facts uh, together with the legal analysis of how those facts should matter to the outcome of a usually arcane legal question. Um, what gets missed frequently is sort of the human drama, the human element, how the cases came to, to be, uh, the crucial litigation decisions that were made, the, the different sort of histories or decisions made by different parties to the case. And there are some really fascinating cases in the book, not only the Gelsinger case, you know, the sad story of a boy who died in a human gene therapy trial nearly 10 years ago that I wrote about. But also, you know, we have wonderful chapters about Nancy Cruzan and Karen Ann Quinlan um, and Terry Schiavo and threads between those three, those three cases that people may or may not appreciate. Um, and the human element in those cases, you know, how torn up, you know, Nancy Cruzan's father is, um, you know, throughout that whole proceeding. Um, you know, the impact on the Quinlan family from having to go through this litigation and that kind of thing. Um, so I think that's something that gets missed and many of us in the law teach with the, you know, case book, you know, the famous case method, where we're looking at these legal opinions and, you know, we're drawing out the questions that students need to understand for their own, you know, work going forward. But what gets missed is that human element. And so we're hoping that this book will be a companion to lots of cases and raise issues that just get missed. And I'll give you one example. I used to teach the Johnson versus Calvert case, which is this famous case about a surrogate, ma um, surrogate mother. And so it was one of the very, very first cases of a traditional surrogate mother. And what should happen with the kid when the surrogate mother says, no, this kid's mine, I'm keeping the kid. And the intended parents, the people who are bringing this child into being in order to have that child join their family says, no, that kid's mine. And I taught that case probably for eight, nine years. And only when Lisa Ikamoto did a chapter for our book did I really realize that Anna Johnson was African American and that Mark Crispina, Mark Calvert, I'm sorry, um, who was um, the intended father was white and Crispina Calvert was Filipino. And you would think that that wouldn't matter to anything, but she makes a compelling argument about how race influenced the decisions that different people made um, in the proceeding, the, this, the, the way in which the court characterizes the, the surrogate mother. Now we may or may not think that those kinds of things should matter to the outcome and, and perhaps they didn't in that particular case. But I just thought it was interesting that there was this huge piece of this case, as many years as I taught it, as many times as I read th that decision, that I had never even keyed on. And our hope for this book is that those, those, those same dimensions of these famous cases are brought to life.